What is it about bugs that make most people shudder? Is it their wriggly, grabbly legs, their crunchy, chitinous exoskeletons, or their constantly shifting mouth bits? Whatever it is that upsets them about mini beasts, those with entomophobia have to be careful about what they play, because while many games are quite clear about their bug fixation, some reveal it to you suddenly and out of nowhere, like a pizza box that's actually full of spiders, ah! Oh. Well, never fear, dear viewers, because we're here to help. We've assembled a list of 10 games that spend at least some of their runtime exposed you to insects. Some are light-hearted, others are legitimately terrifying, but all of them involve mandibles, wings, and compound eyes in some way or another that is sure to make insect haters extremely uncomfortable. Expect lots of creepy and or crawly imagery on this one, folks. In fact, I don't know how you can even watch this. Maybe through your fingers. Yes, go for that. Anyway, you have been warned. I'm for the, oh, for some reason, extremely itchy Ben from Triple Jump, and here are 10 games to avoid if you're scared of creepy crawlies. I don't know, maybe a friend could watch this for you? You'll work it out. Number 10. Hollow Knight. Let's kick things off with possibly the archetypal modern bug game. Despite its cartoony aesthetics, Hollow Knight has some truly unnerving insect-based imagery that'll make you want to shy away from the various bugs on screen even though you play as one. Set in a beleaguered underground realm, Hollow Knight sees players don the little beetle helmet of a nameless knight and explore the hollow nest, braving its dangerous chambers in an attempt to combat a mysterious infection that is turning the locals to madness and undeath. This perilous journey will take the protagonist to plenty of dark and skittery places that are sure to unnerve anyone who finds mini-beasts disquieting. Giant, invincible centipedes inhabit the dark and dingy deep nests, sinister, fluke-like creatures stalk the royal waterways that growl and hiss and continue to attack after being sliced to pieces, and indistinct, many-legged shadows scuttle in the foreground of the beast's den. Hollow Knight is characterized by its bleak and dismal atmosphere, even without the whole undying infected insects thing. Add in the creepy crawly theme and you've basically got a tough metroidvania that's mercilessly driven and absolutely abundant with antagonistic anthropods. It might just be too much of an ask to the average bug detester. Number 9. World of Warcraft World of Warcraft is a fantasy MMORPG set in the world of Azeroth, and those who dive in can expect a magical and or inspiring journey through mystical forests, grand cities, and haunted wastelands. You'll bump into orcs, ogres, dragons, and all that fantasy stuff, and yes, you're likely to encounter the odd giant spider or two, but for the most part, you'll be knee-deep in traditional fantasy monsters. Then there's the Silithid. Without going too deep into the complex, interlinked web of lore that is World of Warcraft, the Silithid are an insectoid race that were created by an old old god of madness and chaos. What this means for players brave enough to explore the hives that are dotted around southern Kalimdor is that your stroll through a picturesque and inspiring fantasy world could quickly turn into a series of spine-tingling, skin-crawling bug encounters. The World of Warcraft developers took special care in the sound design in and around these silithid hives, and those with a decent headset will surely feel like they've descended into a hellish, skittering dungeon, the cloying air thick with buzzing, stinging swarms. You can even make them your pet, if that's your thing. Number 8. Grounded the thing about gardens, lovely, idyllic, and beautiful as they can be, is that they are absolutely filled with bugs. Luckily, the majority of these bugs are tiny and inconsequential, and the most we'd have to contend with is a wayward ant or an annoying wasp who's shown an interest in our jam sandwiches. Imagine, though, if you were shrunk down to the size of an insect. How attractive would your back garden be then, eh? Obsidian Entertainment's Grounded presents this exact situation, and players will never look at their lawn the same way. The game follows four teenagers who find themselves in an unfamiliar backyard and shrunk down to minuscule size with no memory as to how they got there. Assuming control of one of these Lilliputian youths, players will be tasked with exploring, finding food and water, and figuring out the reason for the kid's predicament. Oh, and staving off attacks from the local creepy crawlies, of course. Pretty much anything you might find lurking under rocks makes an appearance, up to and including spiders. Luckily, there's a handy accessibility option for arachnophobes that dials down on the spider's scariness, morphing them from eight-legged terrors to strangely cute floating blobs. Good news for arachnophobes, bad news for those who are scared of expressionless, levitating blob creatures. Your time will come. Number 7. Earthworm Jim one of the grossest things about bugs and creepy crawlies is when they have fleshy, bulbous, juicy abdomens attached to them, and no video game character in existence embodies this trait more than Earthworm Jim's nemesis, the evil and appropriately named Queen Slug for a Butt. Or, sorry, to give her her full and even more appropriate name, Queen Pulsating, Bloated, Festering, Sweaty, Pus Filled, Malformed Slug for a Butt. Encountered in Earthworm Jim's creepy final level, Buttville, this repulsive royal has a segmented body, numerous pointy bits and mandibles, and a 
disproportionately massive goopy abdomen. She is the leader of the Insectoids, a race of alien insects whose home planet of Insectica is at war with Earth. All of these guys are the Queen's offspring, which means they've all been excreted from her ovipositor, which is the tubular structure on the end of her abdomen that is used for laying eggs. You're more than welcome for that explanation, by the way. Regardless, bloated egg-laying queens aside, Jim himself might be a little off-putting for some, but his design makes him a bit more friendly, so he's not too bad. The same can be said for Queen Slug for a Butt's twin sister, Princess What's-Her-Name, who is a much more appealing anthropomorphic insect. Shame she gets flattened by that cow. Number 6. Animal Crossing New Horizons Yes, we know Animal Crossing New Horizons and the franchise as a whole is a cutesy, family-friendly series that would never dream of giving us the heebie-jeebies. Only island vibes and adorable little animal friends await in this idyllic life simulator as cartoony, stylized characters skip jauntily across beaches and comfy grasslands. My question, then, is this. Why did the developers choose to render the insects so realistically? If you have an aversion to all things both creepy and crawly, you may well need to prepare yourself before diving into Animal Crossing's world. Wandering around your island during the day. We hope you don't mind grasshoppers the size of footballs flapping around. Haven't played in a while. Enjoy stomping on the scurrying cockroaches that have infested your home. Doing some peaceful nighttime island hopping. Watch out for sudden vicious tarantula attacks. Honestly, people say they'd like to live in the peaceful world of Animal Crossing for real, but if that means walking past water bugs roughly the size of my head on a regular basis, I think I'll give it a miss, thanks. And don't get me started on the random wasp attacks. Leave me alone. I was only trying to find a stick. Number five. Bioshock. Insects probably aren't the first thing that come to mind when considering Ken Levine's 2007 aquatic opus Bioshock. Those diving suit-clad behemoths and their creepy child companions kind of steal the show. However, look a little closer and bug-phobes are sure to find something that'll make them itchy all over. The insect swarm plasmid. This genetic upgrade, as they call it, allows Bioshock protagonist Jack to launch swarms of angry killer bees at his enemies. These deadly living clouds will seek out the nearest foe, stinging them mercilessly until they're incapacitated and then moving right on to the next victim. If you've never played Bioshock before, you might be wondering where these bees actually come from. Well, when this plasmid is equipped, the user's wrists will sport an extremely sore-looking rash, scattered with holes from which the insects emerge. We don't want to think too hard about what it would feel like to have swarms of bugs crawling around beneath your skin, batting their little wings and wriggling their little bee butts. Of course, in real life, most bees are gentle and need protecting, such as their importance to the environment, and cute little honeybees have no intentions of hunting down your enemies or or using your limbs as living hives. So, you know, look after the bees, people. Number 4. Mortal Kombat 11 Although the protagonist of Bioshock is an example of someone who can produce bugs from within their own skin, Devorah from Mortal Kombat is an example of someone who takes this concept to, frankly, unnecessary extremes. At a glance, she looks like a humanoid female. I mean, she's got pointy teeth, compound eyes, and some spiky bits here and there, but she could just be an alien or something, right? Wrong. She's actually bugs. Lo plural. Lots and lots of bugs. Coming from a race known as the Kitin, Devorah is composed of a swarm of colonial insects that bond together into a humanoid form and interacting with this disturbing being for even a short amount of time will make this fact all too apparent. Most of Devorah's attacks consist of some kind of bug-like appendage sprouting from beneath her skin and either stinging her opponent or ejecting some kind of viscous fluid at them. Of course, she wouldn't be a Mortal Kombat character without some gruesome fatalities too, and Devorah's represent quite possibly some of the absolute worst fates an entomophobe could possibly imagine. It's enough to make your skin crawl, if you had any left when she was finished with you, that is. Number 3. Ant Attack Modern gamers may scoff at the antiquated visuals of this early attempt at intense bug-based gameplay, but let me tell you, when you're playing Quicksilver's 1983 isometric insect adventure Ant Attack, the rudimentary AI does a startlingly good job of portraying the merciless, single-minded, robotic determination of a swarm of giant ants on the attack. Ant Attack tasks players with exploring areas filled with ruins in search of a damsel in distress while avoiding the giant ants that have overrun the place. Possibly as a result of growing to such ridiculous proportions, the bugs have lost their ability to climb up things, so the player is safe when on top of a wall. However, in order to get to the goal, many long dashes across open ground are required and these things will follow you relentlessly. As a result, a lot of your time with Ant Attack will be spent hiding from the swarm on bits of wall while the timer ticks inexorably down, waiting for that opportunity to make a run for it, rescue in tow as horse-sized ants nip at your heels. I hope you've got your route planned out because getting bitten by one of these big boys will result in a bit more than a stinging sensation and some slight swelling. Number 2. Deadly Creatures 
If I told you about a game with a story concerning treasure hunters looking for Civil War gold in the Californian desert, you might be expecting some kind of Red Dead Redemption-esque tale of Old West prospectors. If I told you that game was called Deadly Creatures and that the cover prominently features a tarantula facing off with a rattlesnake, your next guess would probably be a little closer to the truth. Released for the Wii in 2009, Deadly Creatures allowed players to control a tarantula or a scorpion and get involved in various miniature dust-ups with the local wildlife in its tiny and savage world. Choose the scorpion and expect action-based gameplay, with the segmented arachnid attacking other creepy crawlies as well as the occasional rat or reptile with its snippy pincers and stinging tail. Take on the role of the tarantula and prepare for stealth-based gameplay as the hairy, eight-legged menace surprises and consumes its prey. Full of interesting ideas, Deadly Creatures offers the opportunity to see the world through the eyes of these diminutive predators and actually witness firsthand the completely accurate scorpion hunting technique of punching lizards in the face before then doing some kind of scorpion on lizard suplex maneuver and then stinging it right in the mouth. Honestly, it's like playing a nature documentary. Amazing. Number 1. Earth Defense Force Series Taking bug-based mayhem to its logical extreme, we have the Earth Defense Force series that has been treating us to kaiju-sized critters since its inception in 2003, back when it was known as Monster Attack. The series isn't really too big on story, but the basic premise is that hostile aliens have decided to attack Earth and are doing so by beaming down various enormous bugs from their fleet of UFOs that have been situated above the planet's cities. It's the player's job to fight back, bringing all the machine guns, lasers, and bazookas that Earth's defenders can muster to stick it to these colossal invaders. You're going to need all that firepower too, as a rolled up newspaper isn't really going to bother these titanic termites. Of course, scientifically, these things shouldn't be able to exist due to factors like weight distribution and air diffusion, but when you're staring up at an ant the size of a multi-story car park, science isn't going to be of much help to you, is it? Well, unless you count the fact that your guns, armor, jetpacks, and such were made by science, then you could argue that it'll be very helpful indeed. Thanks for protecting me against giant bug attacks, science. I knew I'd find a use for you someday. 